Converting wastewater to clean water takes a tremendous amount of energy. The city of Gresham's wastewater treatment plant is challenging this norm, taking a series of steps to demonstrate how this treatment can be done without using conventional energy from a power plant. Every day, millions of gallons of wastewater is piped from homes, businesses, schools, churches, grocery stores, from toilets and sinks and showers and other drains, through 300 miles of sewage lines to Gresham's wastewater treatment plant. There, it's transformed from dirty to clean water, suitable for discharge into the Columbia River. Gresham's been treating its wastewater since 1936. What's unique about this is that most cities in Oregon did not provide wastewater treatment until the 1950s. As Gresham grew from a small rural town to a sizable community, so did demand for this critical service. The city currently treats more than 13 million gallons of wastewater each day. In 1954, the city relocated the treatment plant from Johnson Creek to its location here on Sandy Boulevard. The benefits of the property on Sandy Boulevard is it's large enough to provide for a growing city. It's also one of the lowest elevations of the city, so most of the wastewater flows here by gravity, thus eliminating pump stations. And lastly, the water from the plant releases to the Columbia River instead of Johnson Creek, which is much better on the environment. The process of taking sewage that comes into this plant and turning it into the clean water that we discharge to the Columbia River is very energy intensive. Why does it require so much energy? To be appropriately treated, the wastewater must go through a series of processes using hundreds of mechanical components. All of these components require a great deal of energy. The largest user of energy in our wastewater treatment plant is the aeration air. The air that we add to these aeration basins helps the bugs stay alive that eat the sewage that's in the wastewater. They're necessary for this microbial process to, to operate. The blowers at the plant provide the needed air to the aeration basins for the microbes to consume the wastewater in the basin. These three large blowers, combined with six blowers in our lower plant, consume about 30% of the energy needs of this plant. It became apparent that the wastewater treatment plant was using 50% of the total energy used by all city operations, over 6 million kilowatt hours, at an estimated cost of $500,000 each year. To put this in perspective, the plant was using as much electricity as it would take to power over 600 homes. The staff began exploring strategies to reduce energy consumption while increasing renewable energy production. In 2005, the city installed a 400 kilowatt cogenerator on site. That cogenerator runs off the biogas produced in our digesters. While wastewater may be disgusting to people, it's an ideal food source for the many types of bacteria that naturally populate the wastewater. Heavy solids from the clarifiers are transferred into a two million gallon oxygen deprived tank. To create a favorable environment for the microbes, the tank is heated to 98.6 degrees, just like a human body. To put this in very simplified terms, certain microbes that naturally occur in the biosolids are gas producing. As they eat the solids, they emit the biogas that consists of 65% methane and 35% carbon dioxide. Next, the biogas is piped into a cogeneration engine. This engine turns a generator that provides power to the plant's electrical equipment. On average, 50% of the plant's power needs are met by this biogas. We soon realized that the co-generator actually produced about half the energy this plant needed. As a result of that, we put an energy management team together in about 2009. This team consisted of engineers, operators, and maintenance people from around the plant. The team meets once a month to talk about nothing but energy. We then set the goal of energy independence by 2014.
One of our recent energy efficiency projects was to upgrade our aeration system, and that includes replacing two of these old style blowers with new high efficiency turbo blowers. We also replaced the diffusers inside the aeration basins that distribute the air to the sewage that's being treated. And these two measures in combination have reduced our energy consumption by about six and a half percent. All the sludge that gets removed from all the treatment processes here in the plant ends up in these million gallon sludge digester tanks. And the digestion process requires that we heat these tanks and keep them mixed so that that heating temperature is distributed throughout that entire volume. And one of our energy efficiency projects was to replace old 40 horsepower gas mixers with these new mechanical mixers that are mounted on the top of each digester tank. And they only require about five horsepower and they mix the entire million gallons by simply moving an eight foot diameter disc up and down a range of about 20 inches. And that reduction in horsepower has cut our energy use by about eight and a half percent and when combined with our aeration system improvements, we've reduced our energy use by about 15%. Behind me is a 420 kilowatt rated solar array that's one of the largest ground mounted systems in the Pacific Northwest. And on average, it provides about 8% of the treatment plant's electrical needs per year. Even on a day like today, which is very cloudy and overcast, the, the system is producing electricity. When pots and pans are washed at restaurants, a certain amount of grease goes down the drain. Luckily that doesn't go straight to our sewer pipes, it's caught in a grease trap. That grease trap waste is then brought to our fats, oils, and grease receiving station here. We developed the fats, oils, and grease receiving station to receive this waste product which is really a resource for us. We inject it into the digester, which increases our biogas production, and then we're able to generate more electricity for the plant. Fats, oils, and greases, or fog as it's called, can be a nightmare if accumulated in the wastewater treatment plant. But if captured before it reaches the drain, fog becomes a great locally produced resource. It can be converted into energy in the same process used to make biogas. The fog contains additional food for the mesophilic bacteria, enabling even more biogas to be produced. I'm Larry with Pro Pump, and I just finished collecting grease from uh, grease traps in the local area. We used to take that grease and make it inert and put it in the landfills, which didn't really benefit the community. But now we're able to bring it here and turn it into an alternative fuel that they're actually able to power the plant with. We're saving money on processing, and we're able to benefit the environment and the community. We currently produce more biogas than we can consume in the one co-generator that we have. That excess biogas is flared. The second co-generator will be installed that will use that excess gas and the increased biogas from our fats, oils, and grease program. Once the city adds an additional cogeneration engine and combines it with its fats, oils, and grease conversion, the wastewater treatment plant will reach 100% energy independence. When we complete these energy conservation projects and reach energy independence, we will be saving a half million dollars a year in electricity. This protects us from rising electrical costs and we are able to pass these savings on to our customers to keep their wastewater rates as low as possible. This significant achievement at the wastewater treatment plant brings ongoing benefits to all in the Gresham community.